Hey guys, David East here, and today we're going to be adding the functionality to our mailbox using jQuery. In the previous tutorial, we created this mailbox table, and now we'll focus on adding functionality to the checkboxes using jQuery. So down at the bottom of our page, we'll open up a script block, and we're going to write a self-invoking anonymous function and import jQuery. So the idea behind this is if you select a checkbox, its associated row will apply a selected state. And this selected state is a light green background. So let's actually create the selected state in our mailbox table less file. So inside of mailbox table, we'll set a style for T body, then table row, then table definition, and then we'll set a style for the selected state. So when any TD has a class of selected row, we're going to set its background to a variable called teal light. So now that we have our selected style created, let's start writing the jQuery. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create some constants. And essentially what this is, is this is the class that we're going to apply every time we select a checkbox. And I like to store it into a constant because if it ever changes, you know you only have to change it in the constant. So let's do the same thing for selecting the checkboxes. So to select the checkboxes, we're going to use an attribute selector, and we're going to select anyone that has a data toggle that starts with checkbox. And if you haven't noticed, my naming convention for constants is to have them all in capital letters. And this differentiates it from any common variable used below. So now let's set the event for changing the background when the checkbox is selected. And instead of selecting the checkboxes directly with jQuery, we're actually going to set this event on the document. Essentially what this code is, is that it sets one click event on the document, and any time an element that has a data toggle that starts with checkbox is clicked, it'll fire off this event. And the benefit of doing it this way is that you're not attaching an event handler for every single checkbox on the page. You're only attaching it one time to the document. And actually, instead of the click event, we're going to use the toggle event. So since we're setting this on the document, we're going to have to get the checkbox that's being selected. But fortunately for us, that's pretty easy. The checkbox selected is just the this keyword but we want it as a jQuery object, so we're gonna to have to wrap it in a jQuery selector. And we don't just want the text box, we want the row that the text box is in, because if we have the row, we can change its background. So using the parents method, we can pass through TR and get the parent table row. So now since we have the parent table row, we just need to add a class of selected row if it's been selected. So we wanna see if the checkbox is checked. Because if the checkbox is checked, then we want to add the class of selected row. If it's not checked, then we want to remove the class of selected row. So I'm going to use a ternary operator here, which is just like using an if else. So to start out a ternary statement, you need to be evaluating a Boolean. And in this case, checking to see if the checkbox is checked satisfies that statement because it'll return a true or a false. So we'll start off with this question mark. And then the following statement will be executed if the expression is true. So if it's checked, we want to add the class of selected row onto the parent TR. And then we'll supply a colon, and the code after the colon will be executed if the expression is false. So if the checkbox is not checked, we want to remove the selected row class from the parent TR. And we'll move these on to separate lines, just so they're a bit more readable. So if the checkbox is checked, we'll add the selected row class. But if it's not checked, we know we need to remove the class from the parent table row. So let's check this out in Chrome. So now back in Chrome, if we select one of the checkboxes, nothing happens. So let's inspect the element. And we can see that our table row is getting a class of selected row. But to the right where there's styles, there's no styles for it. So let's check out our CSS file. And the problem is, is that we're supplying it on the table definition instead of the table row. So if we get rid of the table definition, our code should work. So now I'll select Twitter, and as you can see, our background is applied. 
and it works for subsequent selections as well. However, one thing that's not working though is if I select the top checkbox, not all the checkboxes are being checked. So we're going to need to write the jQuery for this functionality. So in our T head, we're going to have to give an ID to the top checkbox. And we'll call it chk all. So now let's cache some elements. Let's first get the top checkbox. And let's all get the subsequent checkboxes as well. And we can get the subsequent checkboxes by using our constant. However, there's going to be a bit of an issue. Our top checkbox also qualifies for checkboxes. And we want our checkboxes just to be subsequent checkboxes and not our top checkbox. Because we don't want to fire off the same events that our top checkbox would fire off for all of our subsequent checkboxes. So how do we remove the top checkbox from the selector? We can do that with the not filter. So at the end of the attribute selector, we'll say colon not, and then we'll pass through the ID. So now the selector will get all the checkboxes, but it'll exclude the top one. So now since it doesn't get all the checkboxes, we should change its name. So now it's called sub checkboxes, and we'll change it below. So now we'll set the toggle event for the top checkbox. So the first thing we want to do is we want to see if the top checkbox is checked. And we're not going to use a ternary statement like we did below because we're going to be evaluating multiple expressions. So we'll check to see if the checkbox is checked. And if the checkbox is checked, then we're going to want to check all of the subsequent checkboxes as well. So we'll call the checkbox plugin on the subjects. And we'll pass through the string check and we'll find the parent TRs and we'll add the selected row class. Now if it's not checked, we're going to want to uncheck the checkboxes and remove the selected row class. So similar to above, instead of calling check, we're going to uncheck. And instead of adding the class, we're going to remove the class. So now let's select the top checkbox. And all the checkboxes get checked, and all the background applies to all the rows. And if we uncheck it, it unchecks all the checkboxes and removes the background. And also, if we start selecting some checkboxes and then realize we want to select all of them, it'll select all of them there as well. And if they're all selected, we can deselect any individual items as well. So in this tutorial, we built this mailbox. We styled up this table, and we also applied functionality with these checkboxes. In the next tutorial, we'll make this compose page. And we'll also write the jQuery for removing the attached images. If you have any questions, you can send a tweet at me at east.net, or even better, follow me, or you can just leave a message in the comments.